Hello, we're Derek and Hilary Walker, and we're the pastors of the Oxford Bible Church. And we welcome you to join us as we get into the Word of God. That's right, we've called this program Into the Word, because people are into so many different things, looking for answers in their life, looking for breakthroughs, looking for power, looking for changes. And yet, how many people are actually into the Word of God? Because Jesus said that that's where the answers are. That's where the power is, in his word. He said that if you continue in my words, then you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth. And the truth you know will set you free. And if the Son of God sets you free, you will be free indeed. You see, Jesus, the Son of God, sets us free through the power of his words. And so if we get into the word of God and let the word of God get into us, we will be filled with the grace of God. I believe that this is one of the most important things, and that's what we're going to talk about today, is the power of God's Word to change our lives. Yes, it's really important to get a revelation of this truth, because God created this amazing world with His spoken Word, and one word from God can change my world, and He can change your world. Yeah. And we're going to get into the Word of God, uh, starting at um, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through to 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. This is a well-known passage in the Bible that talks about our spiritual warfare, it talks about pulling down strongholds and taking captives. But what most people don't know is that the Apostle Paul is basing his thoughts on an actual war that took place in Cilicia where he grew up and it had taken place recently in BC 67 and he uses this war to illustrate our spiritual warfare and if we don't know this background to this scripture we'll probably miss the main point that he's talking about so let me tell you about this war it was during the time of the Roman Empire when Rome dominated the whole region around the Mediterranean and this particular war was actually the most dramatic episode in the history of Cilicia where Paul grew up there had been a long-standing problem. You see, Rome dominated every army that came against it, but there was one particular army it couldn't handle because it was more like a guerrilla warfare. In fact, it was a pirate problem. And these pirates grew into large numbers and they stole all the food going to Rome. What they did was that they built strongholds along the rocky cliffs of Cilicia so that when the Roman grain barges sailed by, the pirates would see them and they would come out of their strongholds and they would take captive all the grain and they would take their grain safely back to their strongholds and as a result Rome was beginning to starve and the pirates had grown in number by this time to about 10,000 pirates and they had 120 of these fortresses of these strongholds and these pirates were a problem that Rome could not handle Eventually, things got so bad that the Roman Senate turned to a brilliant young man called Pompey. You've probably heard his name because he later became emperor of Rome. Anyway, they came to him and they said, look, we've got this problem. We'll give you as much money as you want. Just fix this pirate problem. Come up with the answer. And this long-standing problem seemed to be impossible to defeat. You know, perhaps you're facing a problem, an ongoing problem that you've had so long that you think there's no answer to it. It's stealing your blessings in life and it just gets worse. However hard you struggle, it just gets worse. Well, there's some good news for you in this story. Well, Rome faced this problem. They fought some pirates here and there. They killed a few. But while the strongholds were intact, there they had no real victory. The problem just went on. And often people are involved in a struggle and it just goes on and on. They can never find the answer. Well, what did Pompey do? Well, as I said, he was a genius. They gave him three years to fix this problem. And he went about it 
with a venom. He came up with a tremendous strategy to defeat these pirates, and he also designed some very special mighty weapons. And his strategy was to use these weapons to attack their bases, their strongholds, rather than going after the individual pirates. You see, if you fight a warfare, you need two things. You need a strategy and you need mighty weapons. He realized it was pointless fighting the pirates. That would be a never-ending fight. His strategy was to go for the strongholds. Then it would be easy to defeat the pirates. And so he built these special mighty weapons which were designed to pull down the strongholds. Let me tell you what he did. He built a fleet of 28 special ships and they had huge grappling hooks and he sent them in 11 different directions against these strongholds on the cliffs. And they catapulted these grappling hooks up onto the cliffs and they pulled these strongholds down into the sea. And the Roman fleet didn't try and attack the pirate ships, they just attacked the strongholds. And once the strongholds that had been built in defiance to Rome, once they had been pulled down into the sea, then it was easy then to take the pirates prisoner because the pirates escaped their strongholds and the Roman army was waiting for them. And this problem that had been going on for a hundred years and just getting worse was defeated in three months. Three months he had won this victory. And so all those that were captured were led into captivity to Rome. Those who didn't surrender, well, they were put to death. And we'll see that this is exactly the scenario described in the scripture that we're looking at now. That was the end of the pirate problem. The only way to solve the pirate problem was to pull the strongholds down first rather than take on all the pirates individually. And so that is the, actually the background to our passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. So let's go back to this passage now, shall we? And let's see what it says to us. Let's start with verse 3. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Paul is answering accusations against him that he's in the flesh. He says, yes, of course. We all walk in the flesh. We all have to act out this life in the sphere of the flesh. He's saying that his natural abilities, his education, his personality, they're all part of who he is. And they're all part of who you are. And, th and that's okay. We shouldn't put on a religious front to look spiritual. We should be ourselves. Because that's part of who we are, is our natural side. But Paul doesn't stop there. He says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. And so now, he moves the subject on to our spiritual warfare and how we are to fight it successfully. To war according to the flesh means to rely on the power of the flesh, the methods, the strategies of the flesh. He's saying, although I live in the natural realm, I do not wage my warfare using natural weapons. He says there's a spiritual war going on, but we're not to war using the power of the flesh. We mustn't depend on our natural powers. So, how are we to fight this war? What weapons should we be depending on? What strategy should we be using? He tells us this in the next verse, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That, that means they're not of the flesh, but they are mighty through God. Notice there are two key things here that we need in order to, in order to succeed. One, we need God's mighty weapons. And two, we need God's strategy on how to use them. You see, the mighty weapons is in this word for warfare. This isn't talking about a battle. It's the Greek word strategia, where we get the word strategy from. It's talking about a military campaign. And that's what we're involved with. We're involved in a strategic campaign. Paul says he's like a military com commander that has the right strategy and the right weapons to follow that strategy through to victory. And you need to have the right strategy. You know, it's easy to defeat someone who does not have a strategy because they just react to any pressure you put on them. You know how they're going to react. When you fight a warfare, you need a strategy, a right strategy. And so we also need, of course, the weapons to fulfill that strategy. Let's look at these weapons. He says, these weapons, the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but they are mighty through God. He's saying, we've got to realize the flesh is weak to accomplish God's will. 
So we mustn't depend on the weapons of the flesh. Instead, Paul has discovered weapons that he calls mighty weapons that operate on a higher level altogether. These are spiritual weapons that are mighty through God, mighty in God's power. They are of God. They contain God's power. In the Greek, in the Greek it says mighty through God. It li literally says mighty in the sight of God. That's an amazing statement, isn't it? Mighty means inherently powerful. These weapons even impress God. You see, we look at the sun and we think, wow, so mighty that thing is. Because if I wasn't 90 million miles away from it and if I wasn't protected by the atmosphere, I'd be burnt to a crisp. But you know, the sun is not mighty in God's sight. He made it with his fingers. But these weapons are even mighty in the sight of God. He's impressed by them. And therefore, they must contain divine power, God's own power. What are these weapons? But the very words of God, released through our mouth. I want to turn you now to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9, where Jeremiah receives his call to the ministry. Now, Jeremiah was a prophet. And what God says to Jeremiah is very similar to this passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Here is what he says in verse 9. Behold, Jeremiah, I put my words in your mouth. My words in your mouth. And notice what Jeremiah is to do with these words, these words of God. He says, see, I have this day set you over the nations and the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to pull down the strongholds and to destroy and to build and to plant. And then in verse 12 he says, I will watch over my word to perform it. He says, Jeremiah, you speak my words, and I will watch over those words to make sure those words come to pass. These words of God are like missiles that will go into the stronghold and destroy it and blow it up. And God will make sure that ha happens. Jeremiah 23, 29, God says, Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? And so the word of God has the power to smash all our unbelief. Romans says the word is the power of God unto salvation. In Hebrews 4.12, the word of God is living, powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And Revelation 12.11 says we overcome Satan by the word of our testimony. And so the weapons that we need for our spiritual warfare are the words of God. They're at our disposal. God has given us his words. And they have tremendous power to destroy evil in our lives and to set us free. They are weapons that can change a man's destiny just through hearing the word of God, defeating the power of darkness over their life. Every word of God has the power within it to bring itself to pass, according to Luke 1.37. Now we should notice that what the battlefield is. The battlefield is the mind. This is clear from the passage which talks about casting down imaginations, arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, taking thoughts into captivity. So in our minds is where the battle is taking place. That's the battleground. And that's where you need to have the victory in your life, in your mind. And these weapons are designed to do that. And so we need God's weapons, but we also need God's strategy for using these weapons. Without the right strategy, you will not use the weapons correctly. And that's what we're going to discover now in the scripture. In verse 4, the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. This is what they're able to do. That's what they're designed to do. They're designed to pull down strongholds. They are designed for the purpose of pulling down enemy strongholds and they are powerful enough to do it. Whatever strongholds you have in your mind, God's words are able to pull those down and destroy them and set you free. And when he talks about strongholds, he's referring to these military fortresses in the story that I told you. And so he's relating the battle plan to the battle plan of the Romans. Just as Pompey had mighty weapons designed to pull those strongholds down, God's words are mighty weapons designed to pull down strongholds in our mind. And verse 5 tells us what these strongholds are. It says, 
casting down imaginations or arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And this word for imaginations, that's what the strongholds are, is the word logismus, which isn't just an ordinary thought. It's something that you come to based on evidence. Things happen in your life, you hear things, and you come to a conclusion. It's from the word logic. And it is your basic beliefs. They might be right beliefs, they might be wrong beliefs. They're your fundamental beliefs about God, about yourself, about your life. And if you have wrong strongholds that have been planted in your mind, wrong beliefs, they are the strongholds that are spoiling your life because they are belief structures that block the flow of blessing to you. You see, God is sending ships of blessings to you on the rivers of his Holy Spirit. And he wants you to have these blessings. But what's happening is that out of the strongholds in your mind, pirates are flowing. Thoughts flow out of these strongholds and they steal the blessings you're meant to have. And that's why you're starving. That's why you're missing out because of those strongholds. And so people can experience things maybe that cause them to believe that God doesn't love them. They're a failure. And that stronghold then controls their thoughts and actions. I had a stronghold of fear in my life. I, I was very timid. I was afraid to go into a room with people in. And the problem is God wanted me to be a school teacher. And so that's a major problem. And I just believe that's the way it was because I'd always had this problem. And then one day I heard the scripture that says, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a sound mind. And that, ca that word came in like a missile and totally blew up the stronghold that was in my mind. And suddenly I realized, no, that's not the real me. I'm not a person of fear, but God has given me a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. The basic beliefs about myself changed, and I was set free. And then it was easy after that to take into captivity those fear thoughts that would still come. And I could just capture them and use my words and say, that's the end. I do not fear. God has not given me a spirit of fear. And so I took those thoughts into captivity by just saying with my mouth, no, God hasn't given me a spirit of fear. I shall not fear, for God is with me. And that's what he's talking about, because it, the passage goes on to say, we first of all cast down the imaginations, the strongholds, that are exalted against the word of God, and then we bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And this word for thought is the word noema, which is our ordinary thoughts. And what he's telling us is the strategy. Don't go around fighting thoughts all day. Well, you can do that, but it will be a never-ending battle. You can fight those pirates all day, and they'll still be there tomorrow if the stronghold hasn't been dealt with. And what Paul says is, locate the stronghold where these pirates are coming from and use the word of God and pull that stronghold down. I don't know what strongholds you've got in your life. Maybe you have a lot of worries. You know, worries come out of a stronghold, that a belief that God does not really love you. You see, if you believe that God really loved you and cared for you, then th you could easily capture the worry strongholds. The Bible says, cast all your care on him, for he cares for you. You see, once you realize he cares for you, it's easy then to deal and to take into prison these fear thoughts, these worry thoughts. And so he says we are to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Just as the Romans took all the pirates captive to the obedience of Rome, we take all our thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ. And, but we can only do that, really, when we pull the strongholds down first. You see, the pirates are thoughts that flow in and out of the strongholds. God is sending ships of blessing to us, but there are pirates that come out of the strongholds and take the blessings that God means for us. Before you can receive that blessing, those pirates of fear, of worry, unbelief, they come out and they steal your blessings. And so most pe teachings, however, miss this point. Teachings from this passage, they just tell people, well, you've got to just keep taking thoughts captive, just keep taking your thoughts captive, and that misses the point that Paul is giving here. He says, no, go for the stronghold. Once you've pulled the stronghold down, it'll be easy to capture the pirates. 
That's the message that Paul is trying to get across. And you might have a problem that's been going on for a long time, but I've got good news for you. By using the right strategy, you can pull that stronghold down and very quickly you can discover the victory in your mental life because without that stronghold continually causing pirates in your mind, you'll find it easy to capture those pirates and to put the disobedient thoughts to death. Well, I like to see the Word of God like a cruise missile that is aiming into the stronghold. And as you speak the Word of God, God is watching over that missile and to blow up that stronghold. And then you will discover a new freedom in your life. The answer is in the Word of God and using the Word of God to pull down that stronghold. Yes, we are to wage aggressive spiritual warfare by speaking God's Word over our life. Pull down those strongholds. I'm going to pray in a minute, and I'm going to ask the Lord to show you what stronghold there is that is hurting your life, that's causing those blessings to be stolen. And I'm going to pray, and God's going to show you what that stronghold is. Maybe a fear, maybe it's a belief that God doesn't really love you, that God doesn't really want to heal you, that God doesn't really want to help you. And You've come to that conclusion because that's the way it's always been, that's the way it's been told you. You've got to come against that and say, no, the Word of God says, I've got freedom in Christ. I want to pray that prayer now. Lord, I pray for everyone listening to this program. Lord, you know that you want to bless them so much, but those pirates are stealing those blessings. Lord, show them what the key stronghold is that's giving those pirates a base of operation. Please reveal it, and Lord, also show them the scripture that will be designed and powerful to blow those strongholds up. And I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I can identify with what Derek has been sharing because when he first shared it with me, I, God revealed to me that I had a spirit of fear because a relative of mine some, a long time ago had died from cancer and it affected me far more deeply than I realized. And every time I wanted to receive something from God, I couldn't because all these fear thoughts kept flooding my mind like God won't bless you. Um, God wants to bless others, but he doesn't want to bless you. You can't receive. And all these thoughts tormented me. And then I shared that with Derek, and he said, we need to pray together. We need to take authority and pull down this stronghold so that you can have peace in your mind. And those pirates, those, those um, fear thoughts will not keep flooding your mind. And so we prayed together, and we took authority. And I would like to pray for you in the name of Jesus and take authority over that fear. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. And he has a good plan for your life. So in the name of Jesus, I take authority over that spirit of fear. And I command it to loose you and set you free. I loose you now to receive the blessings of God. So your mind shall be filled with the blessings and the word of God from now on. In Jesus' name, amen. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but we look forward to seeing you next week as we get into the word together.